Hey, hello everybody. So today we're in for a treat. Uh, I'm going to be winging it here because I am not comfortable with this book, but I just made a new purchase on Kindle. It's called Flour, Water, Salt, and Yeast, The Fundamentals of Artisan Bread Making. So we're going to try to take our bread making up to a new level. This book starts with a one kilogram loaf. We're going to cut that in half. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is tear my measuring device. I have it set to grams already. I'm going to tear that. It says I need 720 grams of water, so we're cutting that in half. 360 grams of water. So I'm beginning to see that baking is a very careful chemistry experiment. And you need to be very, very accurate. And the more respectable books, instead of giving a cup measure, actually give weight. So I have 362 grams of water. It's asking for 90 to 95 degree water. So what I have here is a thermometer. Only starts at 100, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm not overdoing it. So we'll give it a second. Hopefully the water, and it is rising a little bit. That's good. And it's almost to 100. So we're actually going to have to wait for a few seconds. What we'll do is we'll... It's about 100 degree water and we want 90 to 95, maybe 101, 102 degrees. So we want 90 to 95. So it's just at the 100 mark, maybe a little over it. So what I'm going to do, that'll be fine. I'm gonna take my thermometer out, put my water in, and then it's going to start cooling down immediately because we're going into this bowl here. That's good. Now I need 500 grams of flour. I'm going to tear to the new container. So we want 500 grams of flour. Now the book says use all-purpose flour, and I'm using bread flour. So I'm curious what that's going to do. I know I talked about whole wheat flour and water absorbency versus regular flour, and you need to adjust for that. So I'm just beginning to read this thing, but we need some we need some bread, hopefully for tonight, so I need to get started. So, auto lies, that's a new term for me. Combine 1,000 grams of flour with 720 grams of 90 to 95 degree water in a 12 quart round tub or similar container. Mix by hand until just incorporated. Cover and let rest for 20 to 30 minutes. What they're saying is to mix by hand just until incorporated. That's sure sticking to me. So I'm really excited. I also have another book coming that was substantially more money, but I want to start kicking things up a notch with my videos and with the food preparation for the family in general. So how do you do that? You get some better tools. <laughs> so the first step is to get some books that are along the lines of the professional pastry chef except for bread making. So I went ahead and splurged. Things will start slowing down for my business here because of the type of things I carry. Mixed by hand. I don't know if I would have just gone ahead and used a spoon next time, but I'm trying to follow the directions and be a professional bread maker, so we're going to see, we're going to lose a little bit of our dough on my hand. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to let that sit for 20 to 30 minutes. Alright, so it says to cover, I'm going to see, beautiful, perfect, okay. I might have to invest, I bought these stainless steel containers thinking I was being slick for baking, but it's still talking about tubs, so we'll see. We're going to try to use these, we'll put them in a nice little quiet warm place to dry or to rise or do whatever it's going to do to auto lies and we'll come back to you 21 grams so i'm gonna call it 11 it'll end up being 22 it'll be an extra bit of salt but that'll be okay we're still on grams and here's my theory about how i'm going to get to fine salt follow the directions and then improvise Okay, so here's my theory. I don't have a mortar and pestle, so I'm just going to try to smash on the back of the spoon. 
and make my own mortar and pestle. I'm sure the wife's not going to be happy that I'm doing this with our bowls. But, you know, it's all in the uh, betterment of science. So next time I would say go buy some fine sea salt rather than trying to do this. This is starting to feel like work. Well, it's definitely a little finer than it was. Yeah, definitely a little finer. All right, anyway, I just want to show you that step. We've got another 20 minutes to wait for the bread or so, 18. And we'll get to the next step, which involves using the sea salt. Come back at you. All right, everybody, we've come back. It's been about 25 minutes. Sprinkle the salt. Over the top. I'm going to sprinkle the yeast. It's two grams of yeast because we're doing a half recipe today. All right. So it's been sprinkled. I'm wetting my hand. So I'm picking up, folding over. Now it's going to say to use something called a pincer method. So you pinch it through, pinch it through, pinch it through. I'll tell you, this dough already has some character to it. <laughs> it's very elastic. It has a lot of character. So pinch it. It's not even pinching. <laughs> Interesting. So the author was nice enough to uh, put some demonstration videos. I think I'm going to have to do it like this because my pinching is not looking like his pinching. The dough has a lot more stiffness. I wonder if I let it rest too long. supposed to pinch and pinch but when I pinch it kind of just goes right back huh interesting so that's about a lot less time than what he was saying I wonder if I let it sit a little bit too long so next time we do this we'll see what's gonna happen it has a it's just really springy I think wetting my fingers a little bit helped out a little bit. I was forgetting the step where I was wetting the fingers. I don't want to overfold it. So after about 10 minutes after doing this mixing, we're supposed to do a series of folds to it, and then again wait about an hour or so and do another series of folds. So this dough needs two folds. It's easiest to apply the folds during the first one and a half hours after mixing the dough. Apply the first fold after 10 minutes after mixing and the second fold during the next hour. So anyway, we'll come back to it. It's a long process. That's why not everybody makes their bread by hand. All right. It's been 10 minutes. Let's wet the hand. we got to do another series of folds. So you kind of dig your hand underneath, pull and stretch, but don't tear and bring out. Pull. I guess this is kind of the same instructions for forming the ball. Okay, so this is gonna sit for about another hour, and then we'll do this one more time. Alright, I think we'll let that sit.
All right, we'll come back in about 50, uh, five zero, 50 minutes, and we will do our last folding, and then it's going to sit for the remainder. I marked the time at 9.30, about five hours total, until what you would normally would do would be divide the dough, but since we're doing a half recipe, I don't have to divide it. I do have to kind of shape it into a ball and put it in a proofing basket, so we'll come back and do that. All right, so it's been, I don't know. It's about 40 minutes. I figure I'm actually not going to wait the full amount of time. I want to do the folding before. Before I wait too long. I think I let it auto lies maybe a little too long. We'll see. So you kind of get your hand under there. Stretch but don't tear. Stretch but don't tear. Feeling pretty good. I'd say it's, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Trader Joe's pizza dough that you buy. It's kind of in a baggie. Feels very much at this consistency of like a Trader Joe's pizza dough in a bag, <laughs> is what I would describe it. It's got a kind of a sticky and very elastic feel to it. So we are going to, uh, I'll make a couple comments here. Uh, in the book, the uh, baker mentions that you should have, take the temperature of the dough. So I'm going to see if I can figure out what kind of a uh, device I can use. And the temperatures you're working with are between 70 and 85 degrees or so. So it needs to be a pretty accurate thermometer at a pretty low range. So anyway, I'm going to cover this back up. It's going to sit for several hours. So I'll probably put it over maybe inside of the oven covered. So. We'll come back when we're ready to do what's called the proofing. All right, I'm at the point where you would divide up the dough and proof it. So this is what it's looking like. It's supposed to have tripled in volume. I don't know if we've quite tripled. I'm a little worried about that. So we'll see. So we will try to get the dough together and get it out onto the pan here. I can tell you right now I probably should have used a scraping device because I feel like I'm not following directions and that you're supposed to trap as much air as possible. And now I have dough that is separated from the main mass. Oh well, this is rookie kinds of things that you do. So using the same method, you kind of pull Stretching and folding. Pull and fold. Pull and fold. And finally, pull and fold. Okay, and I believe I'm supposed to put the seam side down so that I'll see the smooth side up. So that's what we're looking at. And then we're gonna let this sit for about an hour, hour, 15 minutes. We're gonna give it a little finger test when we're done. All right, so I think I'm about here. Um, so what you wanna do is what's called a finger tip, about a half inch in and watch it come back. You see it's almost not even coming back as much as it should. It's like a magical, it was not ready a few minutes ago and now I think it's ready. And now I have a preheated cast iron lodge pot right here. Take the lid off. And this sucker is hot. So 475. And close the oven back up so we don't lose too much heat. And I'm supposed to just try to plop it down. It's going to be tricky to do this over a Hot cast iron. Okay, I didn't do that quite right, but I don't want to get burned by that cast iron. So we're gonna, oops. See, he said to leave that on top. I almost wanted to grab that with my bare hands. That would've been terrible. So, it's going in the oven for a half hour, covered. All right, it's been a half hour. Let's check this out. Hopefully this is not going to melt in my hand. Oh, I 
That's looking nice. Look at that. Wow. Okay. That does not have long. Maybe another minute or two. Alright, well I'm glad I pulled it because any much longer and that would not be good. That looks real nice so let's flip it over. Wow, that looks good looking loaf. Anyway, 20 minutes and we can cut into it. Alright, real quick let's cut into this and see what it looks like. That's pretty beautiful. Here, I'm gonna share this. Mmm. That's really good. Wow. Alright. 